The Dublin Airport Authority and Aer Lingus have been up in front of the Oireachtas Committee laying out their plan for the rest of the summer. The Dublin Airport Authority says that things are much improved. Well over 90% of people under 45 minutes and, and over 80% over th under 30 minutes will continue through the weekends. But it isn't all, all good news because Aer Lingus say that they can't guarantee that more flights uh, won't be cancelled throughout the summer. We are being um, told to do mandatory cancellations, particularly from Amsterdam uh, and from Heathrow, to reduce uh, our flights uh, and the number of flights we had planned. We're seeing security screening issues in these airports. We are seeing baggage system failures in these airports, particularly at Amsterdam uh, and at Heathrow. What do you make of what we've seen so far this summer at Dublin Airport? Because that's where the problem is, Porik. And and what do you make of what, what uh, we've heard from the Oireachtas Committee today, Dublin Airport saying, look, you know, we're doing well now. Things are getting back on track for us. Yeah, well, clear they're not getting back on track. And uh, I don't agree with the statement Vincent Harrison made today to the Oireachtas Committee on Transport. In actual fact, just this morning, Eurocontrol sent out figures in relation to arrivals and departures out of all of the main European airports. And Dublin is down at the very, very last rung of that. For example, in relation to arrivals, just roughly 51% of flights are on time coming in and out, coming into Dublin and departures 49%. There was one in every two flights are delayed or not on time. Not the 85, 90% that he's talking about and so on. On time is basically 15 minutes in aviation terms. So that is thereabouts the worst in Europe. Like Madrid is 76% uh, arrivals. Uh, Charles or Orle is 75% or so. Helsinki is over 70%. So that's the first thing. So Dublin ha is a particular basket case, unfortunately, and frankly, that's the situa situation. What caused it? Poor decision making by senior management and board, letting go of too many staff, uh, too many experienced and skilled staff and trying to replace them. In fairness, they've replaced some of those. They've replaced, replaced a couple of hundred staff at this stage, but it is going to take time. It's going to be Probably March, April of next year before we yeah, see I, things stabilising yeah. again in Dublin Airport. Uh, Pork, haven't mm -hmm. other airports, didn't they do likewise during the pandemic, let go of a lot of staff and then had those critical staffing shortages when everything reopened and business was uh, busier than they anticipated? Well, that's what the DAA said. Yeah, that's what the DAA said. Uh, other airports, in some cases, yes, they've let go of staff, but not in the quantities and in the particular areas that Dublin Airport let go of staff. A lot of other airports were a lot more conservative in letting go of staff, rather than just kind of a, a blank or a blanket let go of, particularly skilled staff, over a thousand skilled staff. That takes time to get that experience and to get training back again. Uh, under EASA, the European Aviation Safety Authority rules and guidelines, there are very, very significant training to be done and an experience to be gained in order for somebody to actually go and do their job at airports, particularly the ones, the jobs that have been lost. So yes, Claire, some have been in relation to other airports. Like for example, take Ryanair. Ryanair let go of very, very few staff during the COVID pandemic. They held on to the vast majority of staff. And now today we see that Ryanair passenger numbers are 14% above what they were at the peak at this time in 2019. So it's not true and it's not being upfront and honest to say that this is Dublin Airport saying this is happening uh, all over Europe. Sure. It is, but not to the extent it happened in Dublin.